Good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer, uh, hosted by the Holy Cross in Abbotsford and the Bulky River Parish. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works, forty years long I was grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. And now our readings. <laughs> our Psalms first. You're muted, Clark. Uh, the first reading this <clears throat> today is um, from Judges, uh, chapter 1. After the death of Joshua, the people of Israel inquired of the Lord, Who shall go up first to, uh, for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have given the land into his hand. And Judah said to Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into the territory allotted to me, that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I likewise will go with you into the territory allotted to you. So Simeon went with him. Then Judah went up, and the Lord gave the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands. 
and they defeated 10,000 of them at Bezek. They found Adonibesek at Bezek and fought against him and defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Adonibesek fled, but they pursued him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and big toes. And Adonibek said, seven kings with their thumbs and their big toes cut off used to pick up scraps under my table. As I have done, so God has repaid me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. And the men of Judah fought against Jerusalem and captured it and struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterward, the men of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites who lived in the hill country in the Negev and in the lowland. And Judah went against the Canaanites who lived in Hebron. Now, the name of Hebron was formerly Kirath Arba. And they defeated Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai. From there, they went against the inhabitants of Debir. The name of Debir was formerly Kiriath Sefer. And Caleb said, he who attacks Kiriath Sefer and captures it, I will give him Asa, my daughter, for wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, captured it, and he gave him Asa, his daughter, for a wife. When she came to him, she urged him to ask her father for a field. And she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Give me a blessing, since you have set me in the land of the Negev. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her upper springs and lower springs. And the descendants of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up with the people of Judah um, <clears throat> from the city of Palms into the wilderness of Judah, which lies in the Negev near Arad. And they went and settled with the people. And Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they defeated the Canaanites who inhabited Zephah and devoted it to destruction. So the name of the city was called Hormah. Judah also captured Gaza with his territory and Ashkelon with his territory and Ekron with its territory. And the Lord was with Judah and he took possession of the hill country. But he could not drive out the inhabitants of the plain because they had chariots of iron. And Hebron was given to Caleb, as Moses had said. And he drove out from it the three sons of Anna. But the people of the Benjamin, excuse me, but the people of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites who lived in Jerusalem. So the Jebusites have lived with the people of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is this me? Good. Psalm 119, blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed, blessed are, are those who blessed are those who keep his testimonies and seek him with their whole heart. Who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have ordered your precepts that we should diligently keep them. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping thy statutes. Then would I not be put to shame while I give heed to all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to thy word? With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not go astray from your commandments. I have laid up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, 
teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the ordinances of my mouth, of your mouth. I have had greater delight in the way of your testimonies than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. My delight will be in your statutes, and I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and observe your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wondrous things of your law. I am a sojourner on earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with the fervent desire that it always has for your judgments. You rebuke the insolent, the cursed ones who wander from your commandments. Oh, turn me from shame and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. For your testimonies are my delight, and they are my counselors. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it, as was, it was in the beginning, is, and now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Um, the second reading is from Galatians 3. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed among with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by the things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith, rather the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming the curse, becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might re receive the promised spirit through faith. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offspring, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law which came 430 years afterwards does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God so as to make the promise void. <clears throat> For if the inheritance comes by the law, it, is no long, it no longer comes by promise. But God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? 
It was added because of transgressions until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promise of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be made by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. <coughs> Pardon me. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have been put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We praise you, O God. We reclaim you, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the power of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God, power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Bought with the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise you for your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we have put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, from whom all good proceeds, grant us the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may always think those things that are good, and by your merciful guidance may accomplish the same through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Amen. Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our clergy and the congregations committed to their charge the life-given spirit of your grace. Shower them with a continual dew of blessing and ignite in them a zealous love of your gospel. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um. You call it. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, Look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds of the bishops of the church, who shall choose an archbishop for our province, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will preach the gospel, care for your people, equip us for ministry, and lead us forth in fulfillment of the Great Commission. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers. Inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness and so guide and direct their leaders, especially Charles, our sovereign, Justin, our prime minister, David, our premier, that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray especially for Archbishop Foley and Laurent, for Bishops Dan and Mike. We pray for the Bishops Trevor, Stephen, Malcolm, Bill, Don, Ron. We pray especially also for our pastor, Danielle, that by their life and teaching, they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments and to all your people give your heavenly grace and especially to this congregation and to all who join us that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word 
and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world and strengthen us to fulfill your great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all you have commanded. We pray today especially for Andrew, Annika, and baby Lydia in Bolivia, for Hannah and Corey in Uganda. We pray for all those supporting people who are living on the streets, such as Union Gospel Mission, um, Salvation Army, M2W2, and Loaves and Fishes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray especially for John, for Gord, for Neil, for Wayne, for Arna and Rachel, for Suzanne, for Carrie, for Rue. Please add those for whom you desire prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we ask you to give us grace to follow in the good examples of all your saints, that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, through the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications to you, to your, and to have, and you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in His name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today, and we uh, uh, hope that you'll be able to uh, join us again tomorrow and Friday for another service of daily prayer. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Oh,